Neil going live. Okay. Hare Krishna. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. We're just admitting everyone now. So as the names and the cameras and the devotees stream in, please go ahead and get settled. Welcome, all of you. We will begin very, very shortly. Just as everyone finishes being admitted, we will begin very, very shortly in just a few seconds. Okay. Oh, yeah. Poo. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I'm very, very grateful to see all of you. And already we have over 100 devotees here on Zoom, as well as devotees streaming in on YouTube. Many illustrious guests in our audience Rukmini Devi, Hare Krishna, Archana Siddha Devi, Hare Krishna, and so many other wonderful, beautiful guests. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Doyal Garanga Das, and this is Pathways to Perfection, a 10-part series on the nine processes of devotional service as described by Prahlad Maharaj in the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. As our last session, um, and we have His Holiness Sachi Nandana Swami speaking about Atmani Veda. Um, many of us are aware of the devotional depth and, and um brightness of His Holiness Sachinandana Swami. He's a beloved all over the world and especially in our community here at the Bhakti Center in our neighboring Yatras um, as a teacher and a guide in the practice of Krishna Bhakti. Um, he's been a monk in the Bhakti tradition for over four decades and he's known for a significant contribution to the practice of contemplation and meditation for modern practitioners of Bhakti. Um, he's published seven books, re released multiple CDs and kirtan offerings and offers an array of retreats, seminars and workshops. Um, and he serves as the spiritual guide for the Veda Academy, which is active in eight countries and recently founded the organization Yoga is Music. Um, he leads pilgrimages, retreats around the world, and we are over overjoyed to have him here with us. Uh, we look forward to having you with us every time that you are able to join us, Maharaj. Um, and without further, further ado, we will turn the microphone over to you and, um, and eagerly await your wisdom and your insight. Uh, Maharaj will speak for about 60 minutes, one hour. And then at the end, there will be space for questions and answers. If you have questions, please send them in the chat board to Yashoda Dulal Prabhu. He will field all of the questions and then he will ask Marj at the end. So after about an hour, Marj will stop speaking. And then the, um, the questions and answers will open up. Um, and lastly, one more thing before we, we start, we also just wanted to send uh, a moment of, of notice and prayer uh, to Her Grace Krishnandini Devi, who left this world yesterday. A beloved disciple of Srila Prabhupada, a beloved God sister, guide, mentor to many, many devotees around the world. She has touched the lives of, of everybody that she came in contact with. And although it's a tremendous loss for us here left behind, there's also, I know, tremendous joy and excitement and gratitude for her service and for her destination towards her eternal home and Srila Prabhupada and Krishna's lotus feet. So we'd like to send our prayers and our love to her and all her family and loved ones and uh, remember her at this day and at this time. And so uh, sending that prayer out. You can chant one Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The grace Krishna Nandini Devi Ki Jai. Thank you all. Thank you, Maharaj. We look forward to hearing from you. Please enlighten us with your words of wisdom. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Putale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nityanamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari 
Paskatyade Satarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Sri Advaita Garadhara Sri Vashadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Before I speak to all of you let me just uh, clarify maybe with Yashoda Dulal. Uh, am I audible? Can you all hear me acoustically? Yes. yes Good. Sir. Good. Then, then I can. Yeah. Uh, before I came on this call, I uh, heard while I was walking here about Krishna Nandini's uh, Saturn and for many of us, unexpected uh, departure. Mm, I have met Krishna Nandini mm, many, many years ago and forgot about her until I saw her a few times on uh, calls which we had, Zoom conferences and so on. She was speaking uh, before or after me and uh, I always saw someone who was totally enthusiastic. And her enthusiasm uh, came naturally forth from a heart that was free of any doubt. She was very, very much situated in her uh, Krishna consciousness and spiritual understanding. And from that deep place, she was uh, really always very enthusiastic. Um, and then I remembered uh, seeing her when I visited America, I believe during Japa retreats and uh, bigger retreats. Mm. So I'm a little bit, uh, yeah, surprised as the German philosopher said, death is the most natural thing that it will happen for sure to every one of us. But when it happens, we think it's the most shocking and unexpected event. It's almost like a tiger jumping into our little world and leaving uh, with uh, another person in his, you know, he carries the person away. Mm. So, yes, mm. I will, with your permission, switch now to the subject mm, ahead of us. Mm, which in some ways is uh, uh, almost like a challenge that stands in front of us. Mm, I believe that a person like Krishna Nandini has mm, you know, met the challenge and uh, emerged victorious. Mm, Atmani Vedanam uh, means uh, the full surrender of the body, mind, and the self. No longer our plans uh, uh, are there, only following the plan uh, of the Lord. 
the fully surrendered soul will say, let the so-called me diminish <laughs> and let you and your plan increase in my life. That is uh, rare to meet such a person. Mm, uh, uh, I have a few definitions here from Srila Prabhupada. He said, Atmani Vedanam refers to the stage in which one has no motive other than to serve the Lord. Such a person surrenders everything to the Lord and performs his activities only to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And an example is given. Mm. Uh, an example mm, from uh, the animal market. <laughs> when a cow is purchased by a new owner, it has absolutely no anxieties in regards to his um, maintenance. Uh, such a cow is always devoted to the um, master. Mm, and uh, uh, this is very important. It's free from anxiety. Uh, a few weeks ago, I visited uh, a Krishna conscious farm community in uh, South Germany, in Singhachalam, and I saw this amazing cow. The cow was purchased by us and um, it uh, had a calf and gave milk. But then, uh, because we, we didn't want to have so many calves and then cows, we stopped impregnating the cow or bringing the cow to the bull. Um, However, the cow, listen to this, uh, is so voluntarily, uh, spontaneously, lovingly surrendered to that community that she has not stopped giving milk since that time, which is against all biological rhythms. Cows need to be impregnated um, and, and then have a calf and only then they uh, produce milk. If there are no uh, calves, the milk flow stops in the cow. But this cow, out of spontaneous, loving <laughs> devotion, I would like to say in this context, uh, uh, gives milk since already 11 years. She, we stopped impregnating her uh, 12 years ago when she had her calf. We thought, oh, yes, the cow will live with us, but uh, um, we will not be able to expect any milk from her. But she is so so happy, so grateful, so, uh, how do you say, in a way just so absorbed uh, in, in, in trying to, to show her gratitude that somehow against all biological laws which are cut by her affection, she uh, gives um, milk since uh, 11 years beyond her time. This, my dear listeners, is the idea of Atmani Vedanam. It is not forced surrender. It is voluntary, uh, voluntary and loving surrender. Uh, when the uh, European and American uh, audience hears the word surrender, 
mm, they don't have very pleasant associations with this word. They remember war scenes where uh, uh, the defeated uh, country had to raise a white flag as a sign of uh, surrender mm, and then were not treated very well. My own uh, father, who fought against the Red Army in Russia, uh, told me that at the very end, the Germans were finally forced on their knees uh, to surrender. And they had to, mm, you know, in order to not be shot wholesale, uh, raise the white uh, flag and they didn't like to do it. And my father always comments in a half humorous way. Uh, then we went uh, as prisoners as of war, mm, all of us who had surrendered, and the service of the Russians was not very good. <laughs> Meaning he got a thin bowl of soup every day and they almost starved and froze to death. Mm, this is not the idea of uh, surrender. Surrender springs forth from a purified, loving, grateful, uh, ecstatic heart mm, and is manifested in outward activities of the body, the mind, and everything else. Uh, this is... Uh, the idea. Uh, in order to illustrate my point that this is something mm, natural which comes from a purified heart, I would like to narrate to you um, mm, a well-known little story in the Ramanuja Sampradaya. In the story we find the successor of the great teacher uh, Ramanuja going with ten disciples through the wild forest. They go from one town to another. And all of a sudden they hear a disturbing noise and then they see uh, a very cruel looking man dressed with it in a tiger squid, uh, tiger fur or tiger skin. Uh, this man breaks through the, through the forest and, and falls on the path and his eyes are wide open. He is foam before um, his uh, 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 mouth. So, so the, 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 the devotees come and they bent over and they asked uh, in London English, they would ask, are you fine? Uh, but obviously, he's not fine. Um, so they asked him, how are you? How are you? Tell you. Tell me. And he said, I'm very disturbed. What happened? And he pants. Yes, calm down. Drink a little. Drink a little water or something. And he finally calms down and then he says, you know, I was, I was in the forest. I was aiming my arrows at a very thick rabbit. It was the perfect kill. I was expecting his tender meat. The rabbit saw me all of a sudden and knew I'm in the jaw, jaw of death. This hunter will shoot me. So the rabbit runs to me, circul circulates me three times and then places his head on my feet. I'm there with my, my, my arrow. And, and I'm thinking, <laughs> this rabbit is surrendering to me. Should I shoot or should I let it live? 
And this question has not left me. I'm thinking, should I continue to kill innocent animals? Or is this the wrong path in life and I should become non-violent? As he is telling his story, something even more unexpected happens. The uh, the leading disciple of Ramanujacharya, who is leading these devotees on their walk through the forest, who has heard very attentively the hunter's speech, faints, (laughs) falls on the ground, and after a few minutes, wakes up from his fainting spell and calls out, Oh Krishna, Oh Krishna, Oh Krishna, then faints again. Five times this repeats itself. Finally, the disciples say, Guru Maharaj, you are very moved. Why are you so touched by the story of the hunter? This great devotee said, The rabbit did not plan to surrender. It just saw it had no other chance and then lay its head down on the feet of the hunter. The hunter had no intention whatsoever to pardon the rabbit. But still, surrendering and pardoning or giving life to someone is such a natural thing that even the ignorant rabbit and the ignorant hunter did it. But what is about me? I know that Krishna is promising that he will deliver those who surrender unto him from all sinful reactions and they should not fear. But still, I'm so unfortunate. I'm so absolutely stubborn that I will not, sur- that I'm not surrendering my life to Krishna. I'm hesitating. I'm holding back. See, this rabbit knew what to do. See, this hunter knew what to do. Krishna wants to take all of us, but I'm even more unfortunate than the rabbit. I'm still hesitating. Ah, Yeah, this is an amazing fact of life, which I think many of this who are staying in this call call or or attending this uh, conference or this discussion, they know what I'm talking about. They know about the unwillingness, the stubbornness, the foolhearted uh, uh, resistance against uh, uh, surrendering. And that is only because the heart is not yet purified. A pure heart or a pure soul uh, rushes and runs uh, in the very spontaneous way to Krishna. Mm -hmm. There is a very nice statement that illustrates Uh, this uh, natural uh, surrender. It's something which will bring a blush on all your cheeks 
when you hear it. My Lord, the devotee says, I know that young girls have natural affection for young boys. And I also know that young boys have natural affection for young girls. <laughs> I'm praying at your lotus feet that my mind may become attracted unto you in the same spontaneous manner. In our community, I, I see this now. The children are becoming 12, 13, 14 years of age. And all of a sudden, the little girls, uh, they are very secretive about whom they texting to. <laughs> and and uh, you know already, yeah, 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 yeah. it's uh, teenage love. <laughs> the girl has seen one boy and now talks from morning to evening and imagines different uh, scenarios. And then very spontaneously, the, um, at a certain uh, stage of maturity, the attraction is wandering there. And also, uh, young boys uh, are... Uh, at a certain age, there is a very spontaneous uh, recognition and perception of the opposite sex and some spontaneous pulling and some blushing in the face and so on and so forth. Because these emotions are yet so, so new, uh, are still so new. Uh, but they come very spontaneously at a certain stage of maturity. In the same way, my dear listeners, please do not worry. Uh, your natural, spontaneous attachment and so a subsequent surrender will naturally evolve at a, a certain stage of devotional maturity. Then it will spring forth, just like in this example from the Bhatma Purana, which describes the natural awakening of teenage love in the, in the young girls and boys. So it is natural. Uh, but, I still cannot help myself to address all of you in a very, very direct and hopefully very helpful way uh, that can help that can help you to quickly become spiritually mature, quickly uh, get to this stage. See, it is important to once again say for me that uh, um, uh, Atmani Vedanam is something which happens uh, naturally. It is coming from the excessive desire uh, to surrender to, uh, to Krishna, one's, one's life, to be with Krishna, to please Krishna, to have a loving relationship with him. It is uh, coming in a, from this natural spot. Where are we to start when we hear this? Are we doing what uh, mm, we find in spiritual communities? Mm, are we parking this for later? Are we saying, no, no, Atmani Vedanam, full surrender, um, that's something for Yashoda Dulal, not for me. Uh, that's something for Doyal Goranga, uh, not for me. I'm. Uh, 20% Krishna, 80% me. This is my, uh, my uh, 
division, my natural division, my natural spontaneous division. <laughs> uh, what are we doing, going to do with this concept? What are we doing, going to do with uh, this? My dear listeners, my dear friends, and my dear skeptics, I have a suggestion for you. See where you can now enter this very amazing space of full connection with the Lord, full surrender with the Lord, full relationship with the Lord. See where you can enter it. And the entry is in that one qualification which uh, anyone who wants to go the path of bhakti has to bring. It's called eagerness. When the great teacher Baladev Vidya Bhushana was asked to define bhakti in only one word, he said bhakti means thirst. This is excellent tea. If I have no thirst, I will not drink it. Bhakti is excellent, but I need thirst in order to enter the world of bhakti. I need eagerness. Um, yes, there is one price to be paid for bhakti. It's eagerness. And uh, uh, you get as much bhakti as you have coins of eagerness to give. Here, yeah, another coin of eagerness, more eagerness, more, more, more. Uh, that is uh, your entry into the world of bhakti. Mm, Prabhupada writes about this. If one develops this lolyam or excessive eagerness for meeting and serving the Lord in a particular way, that is the price to enter the kingdom of God. Otherwise, there's no material calculation for the value of the ticket by which one can enter the kingdom of God. No. The only price for such entrance is this lolyam lala samayi or desire and great eagerness. <laughs> then you surrender body, mind, and heart. It is a small price. You are so eager. You want to be there. How will this eagerness be awakened, maintained, and increased? I want to answer this with one of my favorite stories from the book Bhaktamala. It's about a Bandhu. Bandhu is his name. Bandhu was a boy who lived in a village near Navadvip. A very happy village life until quickly after another two tragic events happened, which would change his life forever. First his father died, and then his mother, who felt so much uh, separation from her husband, died three months later. Bandhu was inconsolable. There were, was no one to take care, only some village people were there, but Bandhu decided to leave that village where every stone and house and tree reminded him of his father and mother. He went to Navadvip 
And as it so happened, he became a beggar in the street. Now once, there was a great devotee coming through Navadvip and he gave a lecture, a well-attended lecture. And Bandhu, somewhat distraught still with pain, sat at the back uh, of the audience and listened to the lecture. In this lecture, the devotee talked about Krishna and how Krishna is both the father and the mother of all living entities. And that Krishna uh, has this quality that he likes to take care of his devotees and maintain his devotees very much like a father uh, the, like, uh, likes to take care of his family, wife and children. And uh, Bandhu heard this and uh, as he listened, he understood that Krishna was the father of all living entities and had these emotions towards all. So Bandhu decided, I must meet Krishna. The next morning, found Bandhu going through the streets of Navadvip and stopping people and say, tell me, where can I find Krishna? Imagine you would go in New York and you would see someone who stops you on the road and says, where can I find Krishna? You would most probably think, well, <laughs> it's not so easy. Um, and you would think, has, has he understood something about Krishna? And you would maybe think the encounter is slightly uncomfortable because you don't know, is he in his right set of mind? To, ask, uh, to stop you on the street and ask you, where can I find Krishna with that urgent expression? Mm. So uh, the people avoided Bandhu. After a week or so, when he was walking through the street, increasingly desperate, he, he asked the person, where is Krishna? I need to find Krishna. Can you help me to find Krishna? This person was a good man and said, young boy, it's uh, not so easy. They, they say Krishna lives in Brindavan and that Krishna still roams through the streets of Vindavan and he walks by the bank of the Yamuna. How do I get to Vindavan, said Bandhu. That's a long journey. Uh, it's too dangerous for you to do it alone. But I have heard that in three days time, there's a group of pilgrims who will start the pilgrimage uh, to Vrindavan in three days' time. And um, he gave him the uh, place from where they were going to start um, in front of the Dameshwaram uh, Mahaprabhu temple. So, um, and, and he also wrote a little note, give this to the leader of the party, he said. So Bandhu uh, went to the temple from where the group of pilgrims were going to start their journey to Vindavan and he handed over that piece of paper to the leader. The leader looked at the paper and he said, okay, we will take you. Come and be a good boy, don't steal anything. Um, we will take you to Vrindavan. So they walked to Vrindavan and when they reached Vrindavan, the leader said, so good, you are a beggar. 
we are pilgrims, we did what we were asked to do, mm, our ways will part here. Uh, we will do our pilgrimage. You, you have reached Vindavan. That is all what I was asked for. So Bandhu was kicked out of the party, so to say, because they were afraid he was a beggar. Uh, mm, so he uh, did the same process which he had started in uh, Navadvip, in Vindavan. He stopped people on the road and said, where is Krishna? I beg you to tell me, where is Krishna? And the people said, My, we are living here in Vindavan. We also have the same question as you. It's not so easy to meet Krishna. If you want to meet Krishna, you have to go through the process of purification. You have to learn the nine processes of devotional service. <laughs> At that time, there was no bhakti center emission uh, of uh, the path to perfection, nine processes of devotional service. So, Bandhu uh, kept asking, where can I learn this? And then one great devotee said, well, there is a very good uh, Vaishnav devotee. He's also a guru. He lives at Sringavat. You can try to learn uh, uh, the process of devotional service there. So Bandhu went. Mm. He saw the old man live together with his wife and many, and not many, but 12 cows. Bandhu took a brush and immediately started to brush the cows. The old man said, who are you? Uh, I, I come from Navadvip. I, I know how to take care of cows. Really? Uh, uh, yes, I'm very expert in cow care. Uh, okay, said the old man. Uh, good, in that case, you can sleep in the cow barn and you can take care of the cows. So the old man studied Bandhu for a few days and found he has very good qualities. So he said, you also can come and sit in my lectures about the devotional services. And in this way, Bandhu learned more and more about Krishna uh, during the lectures of that old man. Now one day, he went to the Yamuna with the cows. And he saw in the distance a huge, huge cloud. It was a dust cloud. He wondered what is this and went home in the evening. And he went the next day to the same spot. And again around afternoon town, afternoon time, a big dust cloud was there. Mandu was very excited. He felt and he went through a fort. Fort means the place where you can walk through the river. And he sat on the banks and he saw the dust cloud coming close. And he heard the sound of, million, of many cows. Many cows. <coughs> I'm sorry. But then the scene disappeared again. He came back the next day. This time he saw the cows and he heard flute music and joyful laughter. And as the cloud was coming closer and closer, Bandhu saw the most wonderfully dressed boys dancing, playing flute and being very jolly. And Bandhu said, wow, he was a young boy. He ran to the boys and he started to also dance and dance. And then he saw a black boy and a white boy and everyone was surrounding them playing flutes. And the two started to dance 
Bandu thought, wow. And then shoop, the scene disappeared. Next morning, Bandu was again there. He didn't tell the, the guru. He didn't tell anyone. And this time, he went to the black boy and he said, what is your name? My name is Bandu. Krishna, uh, uh, the, the, the black boy said, Kanai, this my brother Dauji. Let us play now. So they played and played and played, and at the end of the play, uh, Kanai said, Ah, I'm a little hungry. Do you have something? Ah, yes, said Bandhu. Uh, guru Ma, the wife of my guru, gave me a tiffin. Uh, I have t uh, samosas. And they ate samosas. And Kanai said, Meet us tomorrow at the same place and bring some more samosas with you. They are very good. So, uh, uh, Bandhu returned home. He was very joyful. The Guru Ma, the wife of the Guru, noticed that, said, you look very joyful. Yes, I played. I played, Ma. I have new friends. Acha. Uh, and uh, they have said they like your samosas. Can you please cook extra? So Guru Ma cooked extra samosa. And uh, Bandhu went every day and he came back very joyful. And every day he said, uh, all the samosas went very quickly. Uh, please cook more, please cook more. So Guru Ma, the, the good woman, Prajvasa, see, woman thought, oh no, my little boy has taken advantage of. These are the boys who just want to steal. They are some th thieves. But she didn't mention anything until one night, Bandhu returned and said, Tomorrow is a festival with my friends. Please organize a bullock cart with sabjis, with vegetables. <laughs> so she informed her husband, this is getting too much. That He has some people, some friends who want to eat more and more and more and more. This is irresponsible. The guru, guru said, let me go and see. So he followed that Bandhu the next day. Bandhu was there, there was an ox cart, there was a sabjis. Um, a, a guru saw how Bandhu crossed the Jamuna. Uh, he saw all of a sudden Bandhu was dancing, but he didn't see cows, he didn't see dust, he didn't see cowherd boys. He only saw Bandhu becoming totally ecstatic. <laughs> Uh, and he was thinking, oh no, my boy is haunted. So he jumped out of his hiding place. He ran across the Jamuna. You know, there was this fort. He ran and he shouted, Banu, Banu, are you fine? And as he was running, he didn't notice the big stone on the way. And he stumbled on the stone, and as he was about to crash down, this would have broken all his bones, uh, he felt someone catching him. It was Kanai Krishna, who had seen this person is dear to my bandhu, my friend. Therefore, he is dear to me. I cannot see him. Uh, hurting himself. The Guru was touched by Krishna's hands, felt great ec ecstasy and couldn't perceive anything more. He just fell into a fainting spell. Mm. Bandhu came in the evening with the empty bullock cart. 
there was only on the bullock cart the old man lying, groaning and moaning, Krishna, 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 where are you? My dear devotees, this question, where are you, Krishna, in my life, is the entry into the process of bhakti. And this question, if you consistently ask it and don't stop asking it, will one day usher you into the palace of Atmani Vedanam, a surrendered soul who is absolutely free from the bondage of your karma, the bondage of your mind, restless New York mind, Ooh, talking, talking, New York mind, New York mind, talking, talking, um, and uh, so on. You're free from, from all unnecessary uh, mental conceptions. You, everything is clear in that palace of Atma Nivedanam. And it starts with this simple question, your journey, where is Krishna? This is called, as we heard a little earlier, if one develops this lolyam or excessive eagerness for meeting and serving the Lord in a particular way, that is the price to enter the kingdom of God. I can feel you are not satisfied with this presentation because I think you still lack something very practical, something that you can take into your hands, that you can do when you can, when you switch off your computer, something that can bring you into the kingdom of bhakti about which you have heard from various very exalted speakers the last uh, sessions. My dear devotees, my dear friends and my dear skeptics, the way you can awaken this eagerness and then finally come to the stage where you lovingly surrender to Krishna is through hearing through hearing about Krishna in the association of devotees preferably, or when you have computer, you can, uh, there are wonderful conferences uh, or, or uh, Zoom calls now. Uh, this uh, hearing about Krishna will first give you shraddha, some faith. Then it will give you bhakti, that is more increased faith. And finally, it will give you love for Krishna. Uh, there is this verse, Satang prasango mama viyasam vido bhavanti kata Tadyoshanat Ashvapavagavatmani Shraddha Bhakti Rati Anukramishyati. Anukramishyati means in steps, like you ascend a staircase. You start with the first step, second step, third step. In the same way, when you hear, you ascend very gradually and naturally in uh, steps. The first step is Shraddha. You will think, well, this makes sense. This comes together. I, I, I can invest some conviction in, on this path. Next point is mm, a Rati. Some attachment will come. Or, or Sorry, not Rati. Bhakti. 
some bhakti, some devotion will come. Oh, yes, oh, I feel something. I feel some spontaneous attraction. And finally, this devotion will turn into this most coveted, this most desired uh, fruit of bhakti, that is love. Bhakti is so nice, you act out of love, the greatest, greatest uh, power. And the example of how just by hearing you can ultimately meet Krishna is given in, uh, in uh, the Bhagavatam. It is uh, a Rugmini Devi. Rugmini Devi. Uh, <laughs> I here we have one very dear god sister here uh, who has the identical name but this is princess rukmini devi who was a small little girl and uh, who always came into the palace hall when narada muni the great saint paid a visit to her father and narada muni always talks about krishna so Rukmini, little girl, little girl, listen to the talk about Krishna and uh, 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 regularly and developed faith in Krishna and bhakti and also then some attachment for Krishna. When the time came uh, where she was, where a uh, uh, husband was chosen for her, she shook her head. She said, no, no, I have given myself to Krishna. And she wrote a beautiful letter where she expressed her heart to Krishna. And the end, in the end, she said, kidnap me. <laughs> Please kidnap me. I don't want to marry uh, a mundane person. I want to only be with you. And this was done. Krishna, on the day of her marriage, in his typical style, <laughs> uh, he came with uh, his chariot. Mm. It is described when Rugmini, who was so had such an un unearthly beauty, when she came out of the temple where she had prayed. The kings who had assembled there were so struck by her beauty that they actually fell off their horses and elephants on the ground. Blah! Imagine the sound of their armor hitting the ground. It was a quite embarrassing concert. <laughs> uh, and then before the eyes of everyone, Krishna emerged from the crowd with his chariot, elegantly and slowly placed Rukmini on her chariot, on his chariot, and, and made a very graceful exit. Everything happened in such an unbelievable way that all the kings shouted, no, 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 no. And then only they grabbed their weapons and, and yeah, Krishna cannot be captured uh, by mundane people, mm. oh, only by devotion. But this is the example. The hearing about Krishna regularly, my dear devotees, so simple. Find some good speakers. Find out what the Bhakti Center offers. They, I have seen on their list whoo, such top Top uh, information is given on a regular basis. And then just listen, listen, and let what you have heard affect your consciousness. Uh, just let your ears become cups, cups to drink the nectar of the kata, or the narrations about Krishna. Then eagerness will come. And when you're eager 
everything is spontaneous, everything is natural. You will want to uh, 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 enter the path of bhakti in all earnestness. If Krishna wouldn't be kind, he would have made everything difficult. But because he is kind, especially in his most recent incarnation as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it is relatively easy. You just have to do it. <laughs> With these words, I want to end my presentation. I uh, am now very curious to hear questions. I think Yashoda Dulal has, no, Dayal Goranga has informed us. We can put our questions in the chat box and then Yashoda Dulal will uh, present them to me. So I will now wait if there is anything there. Thank you so much, Maharaj. This was very uh, enlightening and enlivening. I will uh, briefly make a couple of announcements and then we will uh, launch into questions. I will share my screen now. So this is the final session of the 10 part series on the nine processes of Bhakti. So we're concluding the series today but there are a couple of important uh, announcements about events coming up, so don't go anywhere. As you know, this series has been hosted, has been organized by the Bhakti Center in New York, and it's co-hosted by several ISKCON centers in New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. You can see their websites on the screen. Each of these temples has some wonderful online sanghas that go on mostly on weekends. Uh, the Dwaku Temple, which is the first on the list of co-hosts, has six days a week um, programs. But each of these centers has wonderful Sangha, so please check out their websites for Sanghas as well as any events that they might be staging for Diwali and for Karthik and so on. I wanted to announce a couple of names that you don't normally see. You've seen the hosts and the co-hosts, Doyal Goranga, Venkatapatta, Gaur Kumar, uh, Prabhus, and uh, we have Gaur Sharan, our brahmachari, res one of our resident brahmacharis at the Bhakti Center, also part of our uh, creative team. But these two devotees have actually been in the back making all this happen. So Daniel Cavasi, he is, um, he runs the emails, the database management, and he also actually uh, helps us with the technicals on YouTube along with Go Gaur Kumar and, and for Zoom. And all these wonderful posters that you've been seeing, uh, they were created by Rukmini Priya, whose website is dearrukshi.com. She's a wonderful, talented artist. You can check out her work uh, on that uh, website. And actually this photograph shows her at an exhibition in the Bhakti Center a year or so ago. So dearrukshi.com. So thank you to both these devotees for making these series happen. We have two bonus sessions coming up. Because it is Karthik, the next two Saturdays, we will have uh, Krishna in Braj as our theme under the title Vrindavan Mellows. And the first session will be by Dina Bandhu Prabhu from Vrindavan. <laughs> and the second session, which is the last Saturday of Karthik, will be by Madhavananda Prabhu from Mayapur. So he will be speaking uh, Krishna Katha, specifically Krishna Katha in Vrindavan as part of this two bonus sessions. And then a special fundraising event coming up on December 1st, which is Giving Tuesday with Radhanath Swami. For that, you have to register to uh, get the admission details at Bhakti Center Vision dot eventbrite.com. You see that website here, bhaktisentervision.eventbrite.com. So that is coming up December 1st. So with that, I would like to begin by asking questions. So the first question comes to us from 
pratik he says when we hear regularly it is natural for us to be eager but when any material or spiritual crises hit us hearing becomes disturbed and we tend to gradually go away from krishna we even become resistant to taking help from devotees how do we uh, situate ourselves and how do we help ourselves during that period uh, rather than going away from krishna and help ourselves or prepare ourselves for any crises that might come in our devotional life wonderful 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 question mm. see a few weeks ago i was dealing with this question myself because i had an a uh, covid infection i i was at an event which was a mega splash covid 19 event uh, no one of us knew the host had not mm, taken care and uh, oof, we came down with the symptoms uh, not being able to smell anything you just don't smell anything you ta- can't taste headaches and all the other symptoms and uh, it was a health crisis mm. it was a mild brush uh, i did not feel uh, threatened for for death or anything like this mm. but it was uh, very inconvenient and uh, uh, uh there is something which i did at that time which i want to uh recommend all of you uh i could understand if i now uh lose my connection with my spirit of practice i will be overwhelmed by the symptoms of the disease because it is really overwhelming it's uh, when you have it it's it's uh yeah it's very strong <laughs> um uh so i understood if i'm overwhelmed uh that is not good i will suffer more um uh, and i decided to take this as an opportunity to run for shelter at krishna's lotus feet i think when crises come we come to a fork in the road there's a left path and the right path uh let us say the left path is taking shelter in material arrangements in material attempts to combat the crisis and the right path uh, is taking shelter in krishna and uh, i have always seen that when you take shelter in krishna and choose that path and uh, responsibly use your intelligence to see what can be done uh on your own initiative you are much 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 more successful in compa- combating the crisis than if you just go the material way my dear devotees i have a box with names um who are, of people who are in an emergency you know at the moment there is a daughter of a devotee fighting for life in ankara that's turkey there's a brain uh, a very complicated brain uh clot and and it is it's really it could go both in both ways and it's too complicated to do any surgery at this stage and uh, the parents have they know i have this box mm. box means i put the names inside and i i pray for these and i'm 
I'm praying now for, for, them, for this girl. I don't know what is Krishna's plan, but what I have always seen, always, 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 that praying, taking shelter at Krishna's lotus feet, is usually the solution when there is no other solution. I can say this on the basis of my um, prayer box. There are only few people uh, whom, whose cards I had to burn because they died. Uh, only Most of them came alive and well out of that prayer box <laughs> because prayer works. Surrendering to Krishna works. Mm. <laughs> Therefore, I, I can say my COVID-19, everyone was... I, I, I knew Iskon likes to dramatize, so I did not tell uh, it very publicly because then I, you, you get so much phone calls and so on. Um, but uh, I knew small, small thing, small thing, small thing. We are taking, we are surrendering to Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Yes, Yashoda Dulal, what is next? Thank you, Maharaj. We didn't know about your COVID. We are very thankful you are recovered and you're <laughs> with us. <laughs> yes. So, Hari Prasad from New York asks, Bandhu leaves Navadvip where he begs to find Krishna in Vrindavan. If Navadvip Dham and Vrindavan Dham are non-different as we hear from Shastra, how do we understand the difference for Bandhu in this particular story? And is there any significance for us? <laughs> Vrindavan Dham is known as the place of Krishna and Navadvip Dham is known as the place of Goranga. Both are the same. Krishna is Goranga. However, their contributions, their moods, uh, uh, their pastimes are different. So, uh, Bandhu heard about Krishna of Vindavan and felt some attraction. I think when you go in your spiritual life, you have to um, follow the path of attraction. Uh, when some attraction is there, when something, some flower breaks through the ice cold uh, snow blanket <laughs> of conditioned life, follow the fragrance of this flower, follow that attraction. So some of us are uh, very attracted to Krishna. Some of us are very attracted to Goranga. Same thing, but different moods. Same and uh, so on. And it is for those who like esoteric information. <laughs> uh, when you follow both Goranga Mahaprabhu and Krishna, you will be the waking up. You will wake up and to one day. Uh, 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 one person will be interacting with Goranga and this, another person, uh, uh, one you will be interacting with Goranga and another you <laughs> will interact with Krishna. They're both the same. <laughs> and it's all spiritual and not so easy to be understood with the material mind. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. So actually, a couple of questions came to me. The, um, I'll answer them here instead of putting them in the chat. The Zoom links and the YouTube links for the two bonus sessions in Karthik. The first one is next Saturday with Dina Bandhu Prabhu and the one following Saturday with Madhavananda Prabhu. It's the same exact Zoom link. So if you are on Zoom here or on YouTube here, it's the same links for those two bonus sessions. So tinyurl.com forward slash Bhakti Center for the Zoom link and tinyurl.com forward slash 
temple at Bhakti Center for YouTube. So yeah, that, that was one question. The next, the next set of questions, Maharaj, is from several people, um, some of whom I'll name Ganesham Prabhu, who you know from the Bhakti Center, then Iris, um, Pratik, there's a few other people who've asked about eagerness, that we follow all these practices of bhakti, we hear and chant, we read. Um, sometimes it seems that it might be a little superficial or it might be for the sake of spiritual knowledge or it might be for some other reasons. But how do we develop real eagerness uh, for Krishna the person and for developing that relationship with Krishna the person? Wonderful question, wonderful question. I, I was hoping that this question would come up and you are satisfying the heart of an old man now with this question. The eagerness for Krishna is already there. It is just now a little misplaced. We are eager maybe for a relationship to work out. We are eager maybe for um, any goal, a position at the bank. Uh, <laughs> we are eager also for certain um, uh, goals. We want to maybe be a very nice kirtan singer and so on. But ultimately, that eagerness is to for Krishna. And I will now give you a spiritual secret, a secret key, how to open all the doors so that the eagerness can come forth. I am uh, the shortest way for me to explain it is you are what you eat. There is a verse in the scriptures about the devatas eating very special fruits and uh, they eat this fruit regularly and their bodies get so healthy and so uh, radiant and so uh, full of vital power because of the food which they mm, uh, eat. Now, what you have to learn is eating doesn't only take place through this channel. You eat through your ears, uh, eyes. How? Well, you take on visual bits so to say, of visual bites, you are eating through your ears. How? You take sound bites through your ears. Whatever comes through your senses, mm, smell, uh, eyes, ears, touch, it is food, so to say, or it's, uh, let us use a better English word, an intake, a sensual intake. And that will build up your constitution, how you are. Therefore, my dear devotees, knowing this and knowing of my own responsibilities, I'm supposed to be someone who encourages others, who provides them with lasting spiritual inspiration. I do know I need to be inspired myself. I cannot give what I don't have. So each Kartik, I have since now 25 years, I stop everything else and I just chant and hear. I read mm, spiritual literature, Bhagavatam, uh, the literature of the Goswamis. I hear lectures uh, and uh, mm, uh, 
I eat only spiritual things. And you know what? I feel absolutely brain cleaned. It's, 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 it's this profound cleansing which goes on. It is so profound. First of all, all you're, you're a little bit, what, what, so different space, you know? I don't see anything. I don't go into, uh, for preaching engagements into town. I, I, I don't do what I regularly do. I, I don't even know about the presidential elections. Hare Krishna. I don't know of all these informations uh, because I only hear uh, spiritual, in, it only takes spiritual intake through the senses. And uh, this is a very profound experience. It, it, it changes my whole constitution, my thinking. In the night, I dream Krishna conscious subjects. What else can I dream? I hear all the time and see all the time. Um, do you know what? When I go, go up in the night and go to the restroom, as old men do, I sing. Yes, I sing. Zoom, zoom, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a different person. So, uh, sometimes the mind comes back. Hey, 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 what's about me? What's about the usual life you, you have? What, what, what is it that you're trying to do? I'm saying, uh, I'm, try I'm living a blissful spiritual life. Is that wrong? Can't we have a blissful spiritual life? Uh, <laughs> and uh, because I have learned to eat properly, which means also to fast. Certain things you need to fast from. And that constitutes you, that makes you a different person. So, and it awakens, to come back to your question, it, it, it awakens your natural propensity, your, your, your eagerness for Krishna, your desire to surrender to Krishna, your, your inspiration to do it, your, your motivation to do it. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Thank you, Maharaj. The question, there were more questions on eagerness. Brahma Tirtha Prabhu is also on the line. He had asked a question. I think you uh, answered it in the negative, meaning he had asked, what are the obstacles to eagerness? And there were other questions from Gopika Kanta, Divyanam Prabhu. So I guess devotees are very eager to hear about eagerness. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I must... Uh, here get a little out of out of line so to say with my car <laughs> and greet Brahma Tirta Prabhu very affectionately. I'm thinking of you somehow very regularly Brahma Tirta Prabhu. I, I don't know how it came that you conquered my heart uh, from the distance so much. Uh, Mm, uh, yes, <laughs> Ari Bo, uh, uh, here, here, I see your, your photo, I see your photo uh, there. Uh, <laughs> Thank uh, you very much, Maharaj, I'm so happy to hear you. <laughs> Ari Bo. And happy, and happy you're well. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so, so let me, let me now drive back on the lane, <laughs> I'm supposed to be a uh, public orator here. <laughs> uh, mm, mm, eagerness. My dear devotees, what I will tell you now is something very personal, but somehow we are in such a mm, deep spiritual discussion that one does not feel to hold back. Obviously, this is a key question, 
this, uh, the, the, the verse says, eagerness is the only price. That means, and it, it, it differentiates other thing. Uh, um, it says, it's not pious works or, or you know, doing many things that are good. It is really coming from a deep place. It's not just acting, 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 acting. It's, it's something so deep it has to do with the mood, with the most secret, the most hidden parts of our personalities. The most, it's also the Sanskrit word for another Sanskrit word is Matihi. Matihi means the direction in which your mind flows. You could also call it an inner orientation. You know, these things are the deeper things and we are forced to think, can we produce these emotions at will? Can I even tell my mind what to think for the next 24 hours? Uh, is it possible? Does it, will my mind follow uh, my orders? No, most probably not. It works differently. It works according to sanskaras or previously made impressions, which are deep there in the subconscious mind. So eagerness is also something which comes from that place where it's very difficult to have an influence on. You can't manipulate this, this place. It is, it is not uh, something um, that obeys your craftiness, your psychological knowledge even, your, your this and that. It is something which works according to different, more powerful dynamics. So from where do we get it? I gave one answer uh, which I do think is helpful, that is surround yourself with impressions that are Krishna conscious and you will see, uh, you will create such sanskaras in you, such uh, impressions um, that, 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 that it comes out natural. But now I want to go one level deeper, if you allow me. Please listen as I'm carefully, as I'm trying with my broken English uh, to tell both a profound truth and an unsettling truth. Yes, I want to shake you uh, up. I want to unsettle you. Mm. Eagerness for Krishna consciousness comes when you have close contact. Best is a serving contact with someone who has it. And then you download it, so to say, into your heart. Um, um, I do know uh, Brahma Tirta Prabhu, many years ago, when the world was young, was a Peace Corps worker walking through Calcutta and trying to come to the pandal where that exalted soul, Srila Prabhupada, would deliver a lecture. But he couldn't find the pandal the, and the place. But he was very eager. So he, he jumped, he stopped a taxi, and in the taxi, <laughs> He sees there's a devotee, shaved head, with books on his laps. He says, I'm looking for you. Where is that program? 
and the devotee said, you, you are in the right taxi cab. <laughs> I'm just going there. You just, we will go together. Krishna saw there was some eagerness. But where is that coming from? Where is that coming from? <sighs> I want to now share with you an experience in my life. Uh, but I have to see here the time, so I really need to go fast. I was on my way to Gang, Gang, what was it? Gomuk, Gomuk, the source of Mother Ganga. And I had delayed, so I made the mistake to walk into the afternoon storms. They are coming from the mountain and they are so fierce that they can blow a grown-up person and a mule, mule is a, like a donkey, from the path. So I had to take shelter under, uh, behind a, a, a stone, and then it started to, to snow very, very violently. And then I was there, and the wind was howling, and I was a little bit uh, overwhelmed. I have never been uh, uh, in the Himalayas so high up, uh, away from civilization, this snowstorm. Mm. Then as I waited the storm out, I could see down, you know, the path was going here and then there was a valley down in the valley, amidst a few birch trees, a lonely sadhu. He had been sitting there in the snowstorm like I had. But now where the snowstorm abated, I could see tears coming from his eyes. He was chanting uh, uh, on, on beats. I was too far away to hear what he was chanting, but I assume he was chanting Ram's name because by his external appearance he looked like a Ram Bhakta. And he was sitting there in the snowstorm, oblivious to his surroundings, going Hare Krishna, no, well, that is what we do, but going Ram, 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 or whatever. And he had been there already for before me, I guess a few hours, and I, my dear devotees, I have never ever forgotten that face in the snowstorm with that eager impression. And I have thought, I feel also, I will also become a good chanter in my, in this Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. I will chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, everything. And uh, I have seen Prabhupada uh, crying in Mayapur uh, on his Vyasa son. I have never forgotten that. Now I have uh, uh, seen uh, other uh, scenes where Srila Prabhupada uh, was Mm, uh, in, in a room and where he was absorbed and really not in the room. He was in, uh, in my, I think in Vindavan, he was somewhere else in his consciousness. I have seen these great souls. I have looked at them and I have prayed to them, please give me some of this eagerness. And I think it ultimately comes from there. Look for good devotees, eager devotees. Have good discussions with them. Uh, mention your confidential doubts. Um, to have them removed. Uh, and uh, like this. Uh, and on another level, just create new impressions which make you eager for Krishna by surrounding yourself in a Krishna-conscious way. My dear devotees, uh, 
Germans cannot go over time. <laughs> I feel great guilt complex. I, I'm four minutes over time. This is intolerable to my uh, national pride. <laughs> so uh, I guess we have to stop Yash uh, Dulal. It's, it's up to you, Maharaj. There are more questions, but you might have other things to attend to. And we are a little over time. So whatever you wish to do. I want to end here. I want to thank you all very, very much for your uh, presence. Yes, in some ways, I could not see all of you go Krishna. Uh, just when I wanted to see Brahma Tita, <laughs> he just did something with the computer and <laughs> so many pictures of you were rushing by. But uh, I could feel you. Uh, yes, when there are devotional discussions, there is something going on between the audience and the speaker. The audience will empower the speaker. Uh, the audience will bring out something in the speaker. And that experience I have made. Uh, and I'm very, very grateful for uh, to Daya Goranga and uh, and uh, Yashoda Dulal. And uh, uh, I would like to end this by asking all of you <laughs> to sing a song for Daya Goranga Prabhu. <laughs> Today, Daya Goranga Prabhu's uh, sacred birthday has happened. I hope I don't embarrass you and I hope it's, I'm not out of style. But uh, when there is affection, there is no logic. So. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Diagorango. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, everything needs its its right frame. <laughs> and, uh, that's how we do it in Europe. I I hope I didn't shock you. <laughs> <laughs> but, Baraj, that was wonderful, and it was unexpected. It was sweet. We will have since you talked about the audience. We will have everyone unmuted at the end, so they can say a quick hurry ball and thank you to you and you'll be able to see them if they choose to uh, show their videos. But for now, I'm going to hand back to Dayal Goranga Prabhu to close out this session and then uh, unmute everyone. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I am shocked in the most wonderful way possible. Thank you, thank you so much. I'll carry in that heart forever. You're so kind. Thank you for sharing your mercy on all of us and for enlivening us. The stories were incredibly, incredibly sweet. Um, and, uh, and your smile and your exuberance and everything about you is uplifting and inspiring. So thank you so, so much for being with us. We hope to, um, in the new year of 2021, organize another series exclusive with you very soon. And similar to how we did a Life of Bhakti earlier in this year, we'd like to uh, organize something again with you very soon. So we'll be in touch with you about that. And to all of our listeners and viewers, please be in touch about that. Um, in regards to the... Um, Next week's session with Dina Bandhu Prabhu about Krishna Leela. Um, it's the same, as you showed it all mentioned, it's the same time, the same Zoom link, the same YouTube link as today. No registration is required. So please, please join us for that. Um, and as always, we have our um, Daniel Prabhu will be posting in the chat board links if you'd like to stay in touch on our temple newsletter and our temple social media. Um, on our websites, um, we have a WhatsApp group. We have various ways that you can stay in touch and be connected with us online. So those are being posted in the chat board for you all. We look forward to being with you all again very, very soon, hopefully next week. Thank you so much, Mars, and thank you everyone for joining us. As is our custom, we will um, be unmuting everybody at this moment to say Hari Bol and express their gratitude and thanks to His Holiness Sachinandan Swami. So we will be doing that now and we welcome everybody to uh, 
हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू महाराज थैंक यू महाराज हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा महाराज 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 हरे 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 थैंक 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 यू 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 सो 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 मच 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 फॉर एवरीथिंग महाराज Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mahamala Blessings, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you. Ah, she fell out. <laughs> फलाद कृष्णा से तो महाराज वी ऑल्सो ऑफर हबल प्रेयर्स फॉर हिज ओलीनेस uh madhuriya bhakti madhuriya govind maharaj who left his body because of uh, you know his seriousness yesterday in delhi so prayers for him as well thank you shri prabhupad ki jai jai holy oh. name sachinandan swami maharaj ki jai jai see you all next saturday hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna happy diwali hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna